Hi, good afternoon. Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, my name is Anna Stewart. Uh, I'm an analyst with uh, IHS TV Programming Intelligence. Uh, and I'm here today to speak a little bit uh, up front about digital distribution, uh, after which I'm going to uh, invite my panel to the stage, and we're going to uh, hear a bit more from their first-hand experience of, of the market. But to speak a bit more on a, on a high level about trends, um, I'd like to open uh, first of all, by speaking about the global the global market, its value, its uh, its prospects. Um, secondly, to speak a little bit about how that breaks down, what the landscape is for alternative uh, distributors. Uh, thirdly, I think the uh, uh, speech about the uh, state of the market wouldn't be complete without uh, talking about the hurdles that they might face. Uh, also, I want to bring that up with the panel, have their have their take on how they're um, dealing with that. Um, and fourthly, you know, I'm a, a content analyst, and I think it's really important to speak about content not as a, a, a kind of united entity, but also to break down how content is working on digital platforms, what works on what and what doesn't work. Uh, and after that, uh, I will invite my panel to the stage. So first of all, a basic point, but one I think we, you know, we really need to make at the top of this, is that um, digital uh, video revenues are growing, and growing at rates that uh, linear television just isn't seeing. Uh, this is a study conducted by the UK Producers Association, PACT, uh, and as you see, um, the uh, digital portion of their revenues, albeit a relatively small uh, part of the market altogether, is growing at a really incredible rate. Uh, this is more of a producer's eye view of the same market. This is a Pro uh, content, digital content division. I will also say there's um, gaming uh, included in this number as well. They don't split it out. However, uh, there is also an incredibly uh, encouraging growth rate over the last few years. And just to emphasize my point, this is the global market for digital, uh, digital video. So we're approaching $20 uh, million, uh, sorry, $20 billion, $20 million this year. Uh, and we will be hitting, I think, 30 in 2017. Uh, I'd like to spend a bit of time now uh, breaking down uh, the 2013 figure because I think that's that's the one that can help us understand you know where the market's at at the moment. So this is the same uh, the same bar chart that you saw in the in the previous slide, but with a little bit more detail about each segment and how it's working. The top of the market is probably the, sorry the top uh, two panels here that you see in the presentation are probably the most segmented and fragmented. Uh, of the types of digital revenue available. So ad-funded is uh, quite strongly dominated by YouTube. YouTube is about 40% of the market, but there is also a lot of uh, room for other players on the kind of free-to-view free, free -to -view, uh, side. The broadcast sector, equally, equally large, uh, highly segmented by nation because it's so dominated by broadcasters. And at the bottom, the lighter color segments are the ones where there is a stronger market concentration among the big players. I should acknowledge that we have one of the big players on, on the panel as well, Microsoft. Um, and especially when it comes to uh, subscription videos, so the very last uh, uh, part of that chart, we're seeing a very strong uh, dominance by the three major players, a very tough market to, um, to reach scale in, so dominated by three major players. So now I would like to speak a little bit about the obstacles facing uh, digital players uh, in, in the market at the moment. And the first one, and in fact the second one, are the same. It's confusing. It's confusing for a consumer because, for instance, in the UK, in, this, is a, this is the state of play at uh, year end 2013. These are the kinds of devices that the UK is seeing most likely to be in, in, in the, an average UK household. Which device? is your content offer going to be encountered on? The likelihood is probably all of these. That is uh, a, consuming, uh, a consumer proposition which is complicated, as well as a proposition which, for, for instance, a TV series will take a lot of different paths to reach, those same, uh, to reach those same devices. So as you see, the devices that I've just been mentioning are on the far side of that slide. That's a, a number of the routes that a TV length piece of content might have to take to reach, uh, to reach those uh, platforms. It's kind of a deliberately, a deliberately confusing um, 
table in order to point out that there, aren't, there isn't one route to reach any of these platforms. And we haven't even spoken about, for instance, the path that you might take to, to if you're a, a kind of clip manufacturer or if you're dealing with other forms of, uh, forms of content as well. Another thing to mention here at this point, that the market is constructed extremely uh, diversely depending on which, uh, which kind of country of, of uh, origin you're working in. Uh, as you see, subscription video is incredibly strong in the US and incredibly low in the rest of the world. Ad-funded kind of expands to meet that need. Uh, and the US, as we see, is almost exactly the size of the whole of the rest of the world. Uh, for, for the sort of general uh, revenue size. So I'm a content analyst. I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about content not as an undifferentiated mass, but content uh, as it appears on different kinds of uh, platforms. Here is a survey of pretty much everything made in the US for originated online content. So that is obviously, most famously, House of Cards, most, one of the most publicized original series, but also these are things like uh, Amazon's Alpha House, uh, Comedians in Cars by Crackle, uh, Candidly Nicole by AOL, sort of everything that was originally commissioned for a digital platform. This, um, you might say, someone you know, who's from YouTube or is familiar with YouTube is saying, well, what about all the original channels on YouTube? Well, yes, they should come into this graph, but the problem is when you do put them on this graph, this is what happens. Uh, <laughs> YouTube's uh, content commissioning uh, way of uh, kind of uh, approaching that issue so skews the, the, the sort of SVOD, AVOD uh, uh, difference that it was making it difficult for me to make a comparison. So with apologies and temporarily, I've taken YouTube out of the graph. Um, so what we're seeing here is uh, no, no big surprise, but the shorter form clip content is very much uh, allied to the, uh, the advertising model, whereas a smaller amount uh, of higher cost uh, series and short form series is what we're seeing on, uh, on subscription platforms. And again, you can break this down in a really interesting way by genre. What we're seeing here is that especially comedy and factual are natural allies of the advertising supported platform. Factual in particular, I want to draw attention to because it is so high. Um, UK communications regulator Ofcom uh, conducted a sizable study into the consumption of news in the UK. They found that 45% of the under 45s are likely to use something other than broadcast TV to consume their news. You can see, especially I would suggest that in the, um, the text heavy kind of news site, you're also seeing a lot of video entering that world as well. Likewise, in the subscription sector, we're seeing a very different kind of genre content offer. So less of it, uh, sort of, if you count the number of shows, uh, a higher price and a much more strong uh, emphasis on scripted. And finally, I just want to point out something which I hope is both a, a sobering number and also an inspiring one for the digital market, which is that if you take the global digital revenues uh, and how they're forecast until 2017, you can see how they stack up against the purely the US linear TV market currently. There is a, a, a lot of change, but also uh, quite a long way to go. OK, so what we've seen is the, the overall trend is a very, a very strong growth rate. Uh, the alternative distributors that I've been kind of mentioning uh, are more fragmented probably on the ad-supported side than on the pay-per-view and uh, on subscription side. The multiple screens and multiple roads there can be quite a hurdle. Uh, that's something that I hope my panel can, can help me kind of think through. And also, I just, you know, I think it's important to point out that not everything works on every platform. So ad supported is completely different for subscription as far as what works best on what. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, my panel to join me on the stage and present their services. Okay, oh, this is working. Uh, Peter, would you like to begin? Sure. So are we going to introduce everybody first and then we carry on? Or how uh, I say we could just go one by one, introduce a service, introduce Great. yourself. Yep. So thank you, Adam. My name is Peter Mercier. I'm the Senior Director uh, of Content Acquisition and Entertainment Partnerships here for Xbox in Europe. Uh, I've been with Microsoft since about 2009. 
uh, and uh, a lot of what Anna uh, went through, we recognize very clearly uh, in terms of driving the importance of, uh, of all types of business models on, on Microsoft's various platforms, in terms of driving uh, uh, localization in particular, so the importance uh, of making sure we have local partners, which is part of the reason why I'm here, uh, and then driving that innovation experience uh, to consumers. So why don't I show um, a quick uh, uh, video and we'll carry on from there. Okay. Great. Okay, so it wasn't a video; it was an advertisement. Uh, that was our, our yeah. That was our launch uh, a video for Xbox One back in November, uh, November twenty second. We launched the next generation of games consoles uh, around the world, which was a, a great event for us, a big event for us, uh, where we brought, uh, as you saw, uh, gaming uh, and an all-in-one entertainment experience and social experiences to to life for millions of new customers uh, around the world in thirteen markets in particular uh, at the time. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, part of that, obviously, from the beginning of Xbox, uh, we've had a vision of bringing that gaming, entertainment, and social experience uh, to life. Uh, and Xbox One is really the, the realization of that uh, in this new generation uh, uh, of console. So I've been at, at Microsoft, as I say, since 2009, uh, and the entertainment part is, is the focus uh, for me. So I've been, uh, used to work at the BBC, for example, been in digital media uh, around Europe for, for a significant period of time, 20 years, something like that. Uh, uh, and this is uh, a great opportunity for us to, to transform the way uh, content works and how consumers uh, take advantage of the unique features uh, of our platform and the whole opportunities of digital media. So uh, we started, I guess, back in, in the mid-2000s on Xbox 360. Uh, we were uh, very early in the, in the uh, provision of, of what you're calling rental and transactional video. Uh, so in the US, launching uh, first HD uh, EST movies and TV, uh, starting um, uh, with obviously the Hollywood majors in the US back in 2005. Uh, coming on to 2009, we launched uh, Netflix in the US, which at the time, it seems surprising now, but they were predominantly a DVD by mail business. Uh, we launched an application on the platform on Xbox 360, uh, exclusively on, game, uh, on the games console. Uh, and obviously that was the, the, the uh, spark that set the fire of a lot of what Anna talked about in terms of the growth of, growth of SVOD, uh, not only in the US, but around the world. So they've been a partner of ours for a very long time. Uh, I joined at that time, brought Sky to the platform in the UK, Canal Plus in France, Foxtel in Australia, and really we've grown uh, from there, both in terms of the transactional video side of things, so renting, purchasing movies and TV shows, but also applications. So uh, when I mentioned Netflix or the BBC iPlayer, those sorts of things, those are applications. It's similar to any other app platform uh, in regard that you can publish your, your entertainment app on the service. Uh, using industry standard tools and so on. Uh, but as, as I think you saw from, from the advertisement, uh, we do some unique features. We try and differentiate uh, our product around uh, some core technology features, in particular around Connect, which is the, the voice and gesture uh, camera uh, that uh, powers a lot of the experiences you saw in the video there. For example, when the lady was talking about how to watch, you know, let's watch Star Trek, how do you use voice uh, search to navigate through through content and bring that sort of to life, uh, but also bring it to life in a social way. For example, how do you integrate with Skype and so on and so forth? So uh, I think for us that that experience uh, of, of bringing gaming, entertainment, and social together uh, through the provision of not only just transactional services, which we've talked about and which we're now expanding around the world, but also then the app platform, bringing those unique experiences in a differentiated way uh, to customers around the world. So uh, apologies for the advertisement. I don't know, you've probably all seen it on TV. We spent quite a bit of money back in November of the launch. Um, uh, it's an exciting time for us. I'm great, to, glad to be here, glad to be on the panel. Uh, talk about Xbox, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, okay, let's move straight on to Shana, please. Um, so I did not come out of the technology space and as a result, all of my technology failed me. Um, so <laughs> I hope you guys will forgive me um, as I get through this. Uh, when we're, we're thinking about uh, Pluto TV, we, uh, we started looking at engagement numbers. Um, what, and in sort of engagement in, on online video and video in general. And what we found was when traditional television started moving to video and to, we to the web, everything that smacked of traditional television was sort of tossed out. So everything had to be on demand, you know, fully addressable, wherever you wanted it, wherever you, whenever you wanted it. So that's been a very, very successful transition. You know, companies are set up like li libraries of Alexandria. You can, you're just a keyword away from what you want. So that's 
all fine and good, but over 90% of people are still watching linear television. Not only are they watching, over 90% of the people are watching linear television, actually they're watching a lot of television, so about 150 hours per week. And they're only watching about five to six hours on laptops, mobile, tablets. So we looked at that and then we sort of said, okay, let's, let's look at music as a proxy. Um, you have two paradigms in music. One is sort of what used to be your LP collection is now your iTunes library, now is also services like Spotify. Again, you're a keyword way, you have millions of choices. It's a, it's, it's a very, you know, very good service. The other paradigm in music is something like Pandora. Fully lean back, totally curated. Also, you know, your favorite DJ, an FM radio. Two very successful paradigms um, that exist. So when you look at online video, you realize there's nothing really that serves that Pandora-like experience. So we thought, and thought, let's build it. So basically what Pluto TV is, is a fully curated experience where they take, you know, 100,000 hours of, um, of video gets downloaded every minute to YouTube right now. So we're taking the best of the best, we're putting it into, I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you guys. And again, this is live, so. Hopefully it works. So this is Pluto TV. Um, right, right here, uh, very familiar to you. Um, if you guys can scroll through that bottom bar. Um, we're gonna launch, we've launched on Monday. So um, we are, we're launching, we launched with almost 100 channels. We have 14 dedicated music channels. Um, we have lots of things that look very familiar to television like news and like home and garden and sports. We have lots of things that are really sort of uniquely the web. So we have four channels dedicated to, um, to gaming. We have lots of talks. We have things like skate, which are things that are really popular on the web, not necessarily anything you'd see on television. Um, if you look up here, would you hit the all channels dial? So this will give you, you know, the advantage of, of building something like this is that you can, you can have you know, really spectacular organization around, uh, around each vertical. Um, you can pop out of that again, please. Um, over here, what's really exciting about it is that we've synchronized the signal. So what you're watching here is what you're watching in LA and what you're watching in, in Beijing. So that allows you to, uh, about to, over 50% of people are using second devices to chat. Um, so that allows you to basically pull down all your Facebook friends and chat, and so that's a completely integrated experience. Um, basically what we did in order to build this was we, we hired a bunch of incredibly passionate curators. Um, they were joined by a group of incredible engineers and advisors. Some of these advisors include people like Jamie Tarsus, who ran ABC, Tom Wally, who ran Interscope Records and Warner Brothers Records, um, Trevor Groth, who runs Sundance. So these are people who are you know, being advised by incredibly knowledgeable people who are, incre who are very knowledgeable about the creative process and about, you know, whatever it is that they do. So, after we built all of it, what we realized was we were going to bring on partners. There's a bunch of people that we brought on. Funny or Die is one of them. They've got a full-time 24-hour um, channel. A lot of people online have incredible video. So, the Young Turks have 4 million subscribers. We've got, um, the Life and Times with Jay-Z, shows with Refinery29, loads of publishing companies. There's a, there's a bunch of things that we're quite excited about that we're going to continue to have conversations about. Traditional people are starting to come to us, so we have a full-time QVC channel, for example. Um, and we're just started. So we hope that you guys like it. We hope you'll check it out at home. Um, and uh, please talk to me if you guys have content that you want to, be, uh, that you want to have a digital presence with. Thanks. Thanks very much, Shana. Um, oh, we need a clicker, excuse us. Hi. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Metodi with a clicker. Yeah, um, hi, uh, my name is Metodi. I'm a co-founder of a company called Flips. Um, uh, what is Flips? Uh, Flips is a mobile app uh, for entertainment lovers uh, to easily watch extraordinary videos on TV. Uh, using a smartphone to discover and project using uh, unique content on a big screen. Um, why are we doing this? Um, it's, the content is great. You guys produce some beautiful content. And for the consumer to actually access that content, it's a nightmare. 
And I'm an engineer, I have a hard time to deal with some of those things out there. Um, um, Xbox is a great product, but uh, the, the accessing the content by the time, from the time that you wanna access the content to actually see it on TV, to resemble the traditional channel up and down and punch channel, instant gratification, uh, user experience when we have in a, in a traditional TV systems, it's far, far away from that. And we said, okay, uh, let's look at the, 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 the space out there and what is out there, what do people already have? Uh, instead of trying to sell them another box or another system, so they, they have cell phones, they know how to use them. They use them to discover content today. Um, and they already have connected devices, they have connected TVs, they have Xboxes, they have multiple things that are connected on that entertainment corner all day. And we said, let's marry the two worlds. Um, one is the TV that has unparalleled um, viewing experience. It's not a, like a phone, it's, it's not like a tablet. And the tablet and the phone itself, they have the other advantage, the UX is, it cannot be beaten on the screen of the TV. So that's how we come up with flips, and um, that's what flip it is. Uh, using your phone to find a content and watch it on TV, and providing that lean back experience that we are used to when you are sitting in a living room and um, having a great time versus trying to find out, oh, how I can type uh, Game of Thrones season three on my one click remote control. And um, so just to bring what we've, and by the way, there is nothing that the user needs to do beside downloading an app. If you're in your house and you have Wi-Fi, everything is set up, we'll do the rest of the magic behind the scene. We're not gonna ask you anything. When you press play, we'll say, oh, you have a TV and you have a phone. Where do you wanna play the content? That's the only question that we ask the users. Um, to put this one in perspective, this is probably a little bit older data. We support about 9,000 different models and brands of, of entertainment devices, and also we have um, close to, actually we passed the 10 million registered users on a system. And uh, thanks for the time, and probably have a argument about what is best <laughs> later on. Let's have that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much all for your, uh, your input. Um, I guess the first thing that springs to mind here is uh, uh, something that you mentioned, Matodi, um, which is how is the, uh, the proliferation of, uh, of devices and kind of in-app services uh, that's not really helping the consumer find content. What are your company's, uh, I know your answer, Matodi, <laughs> but what are your company's answer to that, uh, to that, to that problem of how, how you reach a single piece of content which is po probably available on three different, uh, in three different methods? Uh, it, the way that we see it, it we, we don't see ourselves as a replacement of the existing cable system and traditional TV. We uh, see ourselves as an uh, add-on to that, and all those digital systems are an add-on to the traditional distribution. You mentioned the consumption today. Uh, uh, you said it is a, the comparing the time that people spend on digital versus traditional is far, far from being competitive today. And uh, uh, we think that if we can bring the same user experience when people are uh, having watching traditional TV when providing them digital content, we have something that is valuable to the user. I think uh, it'd be wise to kind of talk about Connect here a little bit because Connect is another way that um, you can kind of go through the different operating systems, would I be, or the different um, platforms? Yeah, I mean, our, our focus uh, is about usage, right? Uh, we want people to uh, enjoy the time with the console that's sitting under the TV in their living room uh, and use it and make it easy. So we do that in a number of ways. I mean, Connect is obviously one of them, but I mean, we also know, as I think you mentioned, that the vast majority of time on, on television spent viewing is, is on linear live TV. So Xbox One enables an HDMI pass-through scenario. So that means you can plug your set-top box into your Xbox One and you get a, uh, uh, a means by which you can watch live TV through your Xbox and navigate that through the tools that we provide on the controller or Kinect. And so what, what is important about Kinect is uh, when we launched that on, on Xbox 360 several years ago, uh, the killer app for us was not just the camera, because it's obviously cool to 
do a minority report kind of demo and talk about how you can wave at the screen and move content on it. It's actually voice. So being able to talk to the console, talk to the TV, power uh, uh, platform search, for example, so you can search the entire catalog of, con of content on the console, whether it's games, music, video, whether the music and video is from us, our first party service, or from third party partners on the platform, using that voice technology through Connect to navigate that is another way in which we think we can bring uh, uh, simplicity, a choice uh, uh, to people to make that experience uh, easier. So Connect is a key differentiator for us in that regard. And I think it's interesting that both Amazon and Google yesterday talked about how voice search uh, was core to their uh, new uh, streaming devices that they launched over the last couple of days in the US. Uh, you know, we've been doing this on, on an international scale uh, now for several years through Connect, and obviously it's core to the experience on Xbox One. Thank you. Um, can I ask now, um, what kind of content, I mean, obviously we're at, we're at a content market, what kind of content deals are, are you guys all looking at here? Like, what do you think you know, works best on, on the platforms that you're, that you're working with? Who, you, who do you want to meet? That's a, that's a question to me. <laughs> um, Any of you? Uh, I can talk only for flips. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of it. Uh, we, we, we try to bring the same variety as the traditional TV. Um, uh, bring everything that the consumer might want to consume, for starting from news, sports, um, full-length movies, uh, music videos, uh, kids' content. Uh, and, and, but we're not trying to have the same movie that you can find on cable, but or we can f find anywhere else on a different system, which I say, okay, why people go to the internet? Why people go to their computer? Go out of the way, get out of the couch, sit on a computer, be uncomfortable to find something to watch. And we bring that content back on the TV next to their traditional viewing, so to create that unified experience. Watch everything on TV from different sources. Shana, I noticed something about uh, Pluto is that you have a very uh, strong range of uh, uh, content lengths on it. You know, you have everything from a, from a kind of feature movie to a music clip to a kind of YouTube viral clips kind of relinearized into a channel, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, so um, right now on YouTube, you're looking at about uh, six minute average view times, um, maybe a little more, maybe less. Uh, and what we're doing is taking a lot of those clips and we're putting them together. So for example, on one of the kids' channels, there was um, a half hour show about the best uh, roller coasters in the world. And it was such a cool show that only sort of a human could sit down and really curate and find and um, not, it sort of doesn't apply to algorithm. It, it really needs, it requires human curation. Um, so, so that's the, on the one hand. Then we have a show with Iconics, uh, Mer Merit Vieira, that will start airing, uh, Jay-Z, Life and Times, and these shows are longer form. Um, you know, I think that having worked with filmmakers and writers from pretty much my entire career, most of these people are out there to tell stories as opposed to, um, you know, defining themselves by one length or another. So I, I really think that we're open to just about anything. Um, I think, you know, you'll see longer form con content on some of our art channels. You know, on the fail stuff, those things can often be like 15 sec seconds long, but when strung together, it feels a lot like America's Funniest Home Videos. Sure. So from our perspective, it's, it's the, I guess there's three broad types of people we talk to in the partnerships that we do. Uh, the first one would be uh, our transactional store, Xbox Video, which is across not only the console, but obviously all Windows devices and all Windows phones, uh, and indeed through... Uh, any browser, any modern browser, you could transact, so buy or rent movies and TV shows. So we uh, are working with a range of partners around the world, uh, and you know, all the way from Hollywood studios down to the local providers in some of our key markets and, and further afield for transactional uh, VOD and EST uh, there. The second category is, is app partners. So if you're a broadcaster or indeed like Pluto or Flip, you could bring an app to the console, to the platform, uh, and enable what we would call a third party uh, app experience. So uh, those partners range obviously from Hulu Plus, YouTube, Amazon, uh, BBC iPlayer 4 On Demand, you know, TF1, those sorts of partners. We, we work with them um, uh, around, uh, around the world. And the third category, interestingly, on, on Sunday there was a, a release from my colleagues in Los Angeles, Nancy Tellum's team in Xbox Studios, where we announced uh, some of our first original programming uh, deals. So they're working, they announced six specific partnerships with 12 to follow. Uh, with a range of different partners, uh, mainly in the US, but obviously there's one uh, that got mentioned a lot in the UK, which is with Kudos and Channel 4 uh, around uh, Humans, which is a, a remake of a, 
uh, Swedish television show. So those three categories, the types of partners we work with, and I've met a lot of you guys here today doing that. I'm glad uh, you brought up originating because that was going to be my next uh, my next question. Uh, what about originating? Does every uh, digital platform need to be thinking about that long term? What's your view? We launched last week, so we're gonna. <laughs> right now, we're sort of a little bit like the cable companies and a little bit like the networks on top of it. So for the moment, we're gonna leave the content creation to the people who are really good at it. I, you know, there might be a day that we'll do it. I second that. It's uh, it's the we cannot replace the content creators. I mean, we are we can allow access a different way accessing the same consumer or a better user experience. Or but we are not content creators, so I'm not gonna get to something that get me in trouble. <laughs> okay, <laughs> understood. What have you learned from um, bringing your content to, or bringing your kind of content offer to market about how your users want to interact with, uh, with your interface? What do you, um, what is the kind of strongest, uh, the kind of driving idea behind the interface of all of your services? Um, for us, that was, uh, we, as I mentioned, we, we don't tell the user that there is that option to play it on TV. They, when they download it, it's, they think it's an app. And um, when we ask them the question, do you want to play it on TV, 86% uh, of the time, when there is a TV in the room, they choose that to play it on TV. It was a very simple answer to us. People want to enjoy the content where it belongs to. So in the whole week that we've been live, um, and we, had, we were in a small beta before that, the two, the two things that I think we're most excited about is um, back to the engagement. Um, so again, the engagement times on, online are, are shorter, especially for um, some of the short form content. So we're finding when strung together and curated and, and sort of thoughtfully considered, we're finding much, much longer engagement times, which is really exciting. Um, and then the other thing is just discovery. So about 50%, and this is a Roku statistic, about 50% of people come to Roku not having a clue what they want to watch. Um, so if that's the case, then we create an environment where you, know, you have a category that you want to watch, or if you just want to watch music videos, or you know, a lot of people have something that I call pogo watching, which is sort of you dip into TED and you spend five minutes trying to figure out what you want to listen to, and then you dip into CNN, and then you dip into YouTube. And this allows a sort of very central place for all this stuff to be aggregated and a very central place to enjoy entertainment. Yeah, and I think that's true with us, right? Pogo TV, I can recognize that in my household. Uh, I think the uh, for us, it's about uh, having a, a trying to have a common user experience as much as we can across the various Windows uh, Microsoft platforms, whether that's Windows Phone, Windows 8, or indeed, as you saw uh, in the advertisement earlier on, on Xbox One, and having that modern UI so that people are you know familiar with how it works, where to find stuff. Uh, but actually, more importantly for us is that personalization, and you all know this from your phones. Uh, it's your phone. Uh, you want to be able to pin or flag or shortcut, however you do it, we call it pinning, pinning your favorite apps, content, to the home screen. That's your device. And what we do with Xbox One is exactly the same. So with Connect, it recognizes you and recognizes uh, Peter's experience or Shauna's experience and surfaces up when you enter the room, your pins, uh, rather than a generic menu. And I think that's quite cool in terms of how you get people using the service because, again, it drives a personal experience and that's one that's relevant for you. So my daughter likes Dora the Explorer uh, or Disney content. I'm you know, more inter interested in you know, Scandinavian dramas on BBC Four or whatever. Uh, that stuff appears for me and obviously Dora the Explorer appears for her. And I think that's, that's key for us how we get people navigating around and using the service more is that personalization element. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to ask a question about advertising, so I guess I'm directing it more towards the end of the stage than this side. Um, how do you find, uh, how tolerant do you find your, your audience is of advertising and what works best for advertising on your platforms? Um, we found that the, the audience is not tolerant to pop-up screens and anything that obstructs the viewing. Um, they're very tolerant to, to traditional TV pre-rolls, mid-rolls, you have your program, you have your video, but video advertising. And when we start popping up ad additional stuff on the phone or, or on the screen of the TV, uh, we saw a little bit of a drawback. They stopped watching, they stopped using the service. But there was a clear indicator that the closer we stay to the experience they're used to, uh, the most likely they are to continue using that, what we offer. Do they prefer or, or 
uh, is a certain length optimum for pre-roll and mid-roll? Or are they TV-like ads? Are they kind of one it, minute, it, two TV, minutes? It's it actually relevant to the content. If, if I'm watching, let's say, uh, we have, uh, let's say, Washington Post, they have very two minutes or three minutes segments of news. Uh, I'm not gonna sit in and watch a one minute commercial before that. It, it's more of a short, it's relevant to the content. If it's a full length movie, you can actually watch two or three commercials in chunks and still not lose the client, uh, the user. Uh, John, do you have anything to add, or shall I open up to? Uh... Uh, not really yet. I mean, okay, you know. You'll probably we'll have see. that from from the data in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll probably we'll know talk more about in a the data weeks. in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Uh, if uh, anybody in the audience would like to uh, ask our panel a question, uh, yeah, the gentleman in the uh, yellow lanyard. Yeah. Uh, we're talking to people about subscription and freemium models. Um, depends on on the partner um, and geoblocking and all the other things that go with that. Um, and for the most part, right now we're we're an ad revenue based and a rev share based company. Um, for us, uh, we support ad, uh, ad 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 supported channels as well as the subscription channels. So it's up to the user to select uh, if if the particular channel is ad supported, they'll have to watch it with ads. Uh, some channels, they're paid channels. Uh, they have to pay fee to use the channel. Okay, thank you. Don't see any more hands. Okay, I think that brings... Oh, yeah, sorry, gentlemen, on the end. Um, so, a question for Xbox. Um, how do you handle having com um, essentially competitors on your platform. So you obviously have people like Netflix, you have Blink Blocks, which is transactional VOD, the same as you offer yourself. So um, kind of what you, what's your strategy uh, around that? Yeah, I mean, we have, um, uh, you know, on Windows and on, on phone, fully open app platforms, right? Um, uh, like other app platforms. Xbox um, uh, right now remains uh, curated in that regard. Uh, but we don't have any, and, and actually on the game side is opening up. There's a program called uh, Indef Independent Developers at Xbox for Gaming, uh, which is how uh, independent game developers can, can come on the platform. For media and entertainment partners, uh, we've started with a curated model, uh, largely because of just, you know, making, uh, certainly on Xbox One, just trying to manage the process a little bit. Uh, but we have no philosophical issue, broadly speaking, with competitive partners. You mentioned Blinkbox, for example, Netflix. I mean, as I mentioned, we were launched them first in 2009. I, our focus is about engagement and usage, really, okay? So uh, we want people to have a breadth of uh, content offerings available to them. Uh, we think it's better for us that we have competitors on the platform in that regard because, for example, Blinkbox doing a transactional service, they do a great job. Uh, they got a very deep catalog and are a great partner for us in the UK. Uh, we differentiate from them because we have a global offer, you know, live now in 21 markets and more to come. Um, we have three screens uh, uh, in our environment uh, uh, in a way that, that some of our competitors don't. And so we're, we're quite uh, open about that because really for us it's about the consumer driving engagement and usage uh, and, you know, becoming passionate and a fan of our platform. And I think with Xbox that's kind of at the, at the core of it. Okay, uh, I think we're out of time, but if anybody else has uh, uh, an individual question for our speakers, we're going to be at the Meet the Panel uh, section outside. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, guys.